this is what you get when you invite Sabat to town. I agree. This is not a good example. You want to become a part of the Camarilla. How about you just deliver all of your Sabbat elders with stakes through their hearts on my doorstep? I expect all of you to go home and have a very deep and long think about what you're going to vote tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. This is Red Moon Roleplay. There's a couple of favours I have to ask of you just for tonight. Don't worry, it doesn't require starting any fires. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> what, what do you need? What, what you, you say need? about my face, about being able to see it. I would like to see yours. I'd like you to drop your mask. You've just seen me drop mine. You've just seen my inner sanctum, if you like. Drop your mask. You go around pretending to be someone you're not. You're going to be sick, man. It's, it's not a pretty sight. I, I've lost all capacity for throwing up. You may well be hideous, but I think at this point we owe it to each other to be able to see each other's true faces. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. I. Maybe it's. Maybe it's not a good habit. I don't. All right. All right. Hang on. And um, you see slowly how the sort of folds in my skin seem to start moving and pouring over each other. You see, you see uh, antennae of insects looking out places where they shouldn't. And uh, I'm, I'm just standing there, and I'm still sort of. Not looking at you, avoiding your gaze a bit, looking at the the shoots and the covers and and um I try to relax and let everything go for a bit, and that's when I notice that I'm a bit hungry, and that takes my attention as I stand there and uh, then I see you looking at me and I give a shrug yeah, this is. It's all you get. <laughs> this is this is the show. <laughs> hmm. Well, you didn't lie. Uh, hmm. I caught glimpses of you before, of course. I mean, about the bugs. I don't. I don't know how that happened. One day they they just wouldn't leave me alone, and I I tried everything. I I tried. Tried killing them off in, in different kinds of ways, and somehow they always came back. And they started. <laughs> I got these things living in me, man. It's. It's like it's, they could tell you were dead, and it was as if you were dead for far longer. I suppose if you just woke up one night and they were already there. Yeah, I don't know, man. These these kinds of bugs are not even supposed to be attracted to dead bodies it's, it's just it's something about me I, i've had a way with animals particularly since since i was turned and somehow i don't know if, if that affects them too I, I it's like i feel their minds as they move <coughs> uh, and I, maybe that's why they chose me i don't need to tell you how how you look, you already know, and I'm sure you spent many hours staring in the mirror. <laughs> um, yeah, try not to. But it's important for me to be able to normalize how you look. Oh yeah, why is that? Well, I imagine we'll probably spend more time with each other after all this is done. And I fold my arms and I look at you and I nod. Yeah, you know, you know, I'd like that. And I'd love for you, uh, Aneda, to to meet uh, Michael as well. I, I assume Michael hasn't seen this face of yours. I stop, and it's obvious. 
Uh, f funny thing that you say that as <laughs> just just the other day that I somehow took a step. I know you you you've been telling me that obviously I I we should we should keep this secret and and you wouldn't have told me you said if if you had told Ada. Uh, I'm just gonna guess in some way that you have. Hmm. And I. This I can tell you, man. It's I shake my head. It took a lot of. A lot of courage to muster up to dad, reveal myself to him. Him being, you know, closest thing I have, and still I kept this from him, and the, he had a. He had a really bad reaction. Not, not so much to the horror that you see in front of you, but that I had been keeping a huge thing away from him. That would, that's what upset him, <laughs> you know? Not that I drink blood or, or I've got a hive of insects living in me. It's the fact that I lied to him or just didn't tell him the truth. Isn't that beautiful? In a way. It really is. Uh, I... <sighs> he must be quite a man. And by man, I mean... Well, human on any on any level. I know what you mean. I... <laughs> yeah. He is. He really is. Well... He really is. Uh, almost <laughs> making me... Emotional, Alan, yeah. thinking of... Well, thinking of Ada there, not because I'm... Ignoring what you're saying, but because it's relatable. No one has been able to understand me quite how Ada has. And what I would suggest to you is... Obviously, you're going to want to protect Michael with everything. You have every inch of your being. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If there are certain elements of what you are that you haven't exposed to him yet, be cautious with what you reveal and how quickly you do it. Because love is wonderful and trust is fantastic, but there's only so much I think any mind can take. Now, we, we have... There is another favour I need to ask. This is the second one. The main reason I brought you here, it wasn't to take you down uh, my memory lane. Uh, I need to rearrange some furniture. <laughs> oh, to, to get her ready, to get the place ready for her to come back. Exactly, yes. I mean, I probably could have been able to do it myself. Uh, but no, sure. sure let, let, let's let's get, let's let's get to business. Uh, what do you what do you need? And I, and I seem a bit relieved that we're sort of just going on to some practical matters. Yes, we're going to be moving the master bed, the uh, king size, into the living room uh, facing the door. We're we'll moving the main sofa into the master bedroom. Uh, I'm going to require. Hmm, I wander off. Yeah, and I follow you and I help you start setting the place as, as you instruct. All in all, it takes around an hour. Ellen, you realize that the way the furniture are being arranged is quite odd. You have moved the master bedroom into the living room. And the way that things are placed now... It's just completely nonsense. It does not make any sense at all. But Dolph seems quite happy with the result. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself that maybe he's going through some kind of life crisis or something. I mean, and he's been through a lot of stuff. Maybe, maybe he just, maybe he's had enough of, of this sleekness of uh, this uh, perfect Nordic style house and, and just want to mess things up a bit. Uh, uh, so I don't question him immediately uh, about what he's doing and uh, how he every wants everything to be put. I just help him out and I try to see the reasoning with how this would help Ada. Well, Alan, you are a true friend. 
moving all of this? Yeah, with him? no, I'm happy to help. So you think this will be better for her as she comes back? Better for what? both of us, yes. All right, but what are you gonna sleep? I mean, the windows here. Well, I'll worry about that. Of course, of course, yeah. Oh, all right. Well, uh, that's that. I'm guessing you'll uh, gonna bring her back soon. Uh, are you doing that tonight, or? Uh, yes, I suppose I will. I don't expect you to ferry me to the hospital. I'll get a taxi, but I will. I will be seeing you tomorrow night. That sounds good. Did he say a time for that? Mm, no, but uh, apparently we're supposed to be speaking to our. Uh, clan mates, if indeed we have any, and I guess word will travel. Yeah, I mean... He seems to have our numbers, so I'm sure we will wake up to find messages on our phones. And locations. Oh, yeah, yeah alright, alright. I guess that's how it goes. <laughs> Let me take you back down to, to the car. Thanks, thanks man. And um, I'll probably, probably should get rid of this car, I don't know and go back to the airport and get my own car. Yeah. Um, so you're being escorted down, and Dolph, you are going directly to the hospital via taxi. Yeah. When you get there, um, Ada is for the first time sitting up, and she is actually dressed in her own clothes, um, some clothes that you made sure was brought to the hospital. And she is looking more and more like herself, albeit a bit pale still. And she smiles. My darling, it is so wonderful to see you. I take her in my arms, I kiss her. Hi, Dolph. How are you? I'm sorry it's so late and I'm amazed you're still awake. Well, that's okay. My inner clock has been compromised a bit, I suppose. Um, I've just realized I'm still wearing the same clothes. What a shock. Uh, I'm sorry if these smell a bit smoky. Um, it does. Where have you been? Uh, it's a long story. I'll tell you once I've got you safely home. Right. Come on. Okay. Do you need a wheelchair or are you okay to walk? Uh, no, I, I, I think I can, I can manage. She stands up a bit wobbly, but she, she manages. You can always lean on me. And you walk out of the hospital together and make it safely to the taxi. And arrive home. She looks out of the window and she, she lightens up again. I really, really missed sleeping in my own bed. Mm-hmm. Well... No place like home, is there? And I've missed you. I I've missed just working again and getting back to normal and uh, I missed life. Well, we're going to have to take things a little more slowly now because you've been through quite a shock, been through quite a lifestyle change. I don't want you just jumping in with both feet. Um, no, I I was thinking starting, you know, starting work next week and... No, well, let's see how you get on. We need to be very, very careful with you, with your health, with any danger you're being put in. What I, I need you... I need you to know that your safety is of the utmost importance. Right. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Of course, but I'm 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 all better now, and I'm sure that you know it was just an accident. And well, the doctor told me that you would require quite a recuperation period. It's may maybe that they didn't tell you that, or you forgot because of what you've been through. But don't worry, I have I've memorized everything that you need. I'm sure the doctor said that I could start next week, but maybe. Let me look after that, Ada. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, well, let's get up. And she goes out of the car, and you um, you make it upstairs. And why don't you describe how the apartment now looks as Ada steps in? Well, it looks completely different. It will look completely different to her eyes. 
everything that she requires, all of her living needs, uh, have been moved into the living room, into the central chamber of the apartment. Uh, everything that she could possibly require, from her reading material to her, to her soap bag, to her bed, to a selection of clothing, is on a standing rack. Um, oh, uh, why is, why is everything in the living room? I close the door, lock it. It's very important to me that you are safe. Ada. Um. Yeah. I I I understand that. Um, I am safe. Exactly. You are safe right here. Right here, where I know where you are. I know that you can see the door. That you can get out immediately. If you need to, if anything happens that you can just leave, where if I'm in here with you and I'm going to put up some blackout curtains, I think, maybe move the ones from our bedroom into here. I forgot to do that with Alan. I'm thinking we're going to spend most of our sleeping time here in the living room now because I want our eyes to be able to meet that door. I want it to be as little foot space between us getting from the bed to the door as possible. I don't want you wandering off, Ada. I don't want you falling over, getting hurt. I don't want someone to be breaking in and jumping you in in a room and me not hearing because I'm asleep in another Dolph, room during the day. Dolph, darling, what's... Don't interrupt me. You need to be by my side... You need to be aware when something happens, and I need to be aware when that happens. And the best place for both of us to be, if anything happens, is here. The central area, we've got access to all the other rooms in the apartment if we really need them, but we also have access to the exits, which is also very important. Tough, this is a bit much. This, this is a little... Crazy, almost. Show some gratitude. Um. Please, I got you to the hospital. I've just got you back from the hospital. I've been taking care of you. You have received very good treatment. And I have just rearranged this apartment in very short time to look after you. If it doesn't work out, after a week or two, we'll start moving things back to where they were before. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I'm i I'm thankful. Thank you for, for taking care of me. I've... Of course, but... You know how important you are to me. Well, <laughs> you're important to me, too. It's just... I'm, I'm, oh, thank you. I'm sorry, it's a little... It's just a little much. I... I know you've been through a lot, haven't you? But I'm sure you understand why everything has been... Had to be moved around a bit. I... So Tell me you understand. I... I understand. Thank you. I'm so glad I... Hug her very tightly. So we're going to... But I... What about my meetings next week? No, don't worry about them. I'm going to make sure that they get rearranged. But... But they're really important. And I'm sure I... I, I can attend them in, in some way. I mean, we'll I, see if I can do them online. I didn't... <laughs> ensure we had a apartment with fiber optic for nothing. Okay, um, <laughs> well, okay, well, I, I guess I'm just happy to be home. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for taking care of me. I always will. All right, I want to know what Vincent is up to. When Dolph sort of took Alan away, I sort of just nodded a farewell. For I was most annoyed about the location of Teller, if I'm honest. But I decided, fine, fine. I'm actually not that far away, I don't think, if I'm in central Chicago, from my actual home. No. So, I walk. It's quite a mild evening. You rarely get to walk, actually, so it's, 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 all, it's, it's nice to be able to see the city from 
the common man's perspective. Um, you get to see some street art you haven't seen before, mm. um, which is quite nice. Um, and it's a thoroughly enjoyable trip. Yes, it is. I'm still actually in a good mood. The situation is interesting. I'm not entirely sure what my sire is going to think, really. I mean, on one hand, the Isla Sombra. If they're anything like Malenkov, that was all rather unpleasant. But, well, uh, Sierra's not so bad, and... I have no idea how they're going to go around killing all their elders. I mean, how many elders do they even have? I don't know. But, um, it's still an interesting proposal. I suppose I'd be all for supporting whatever the prince wants, but I'd better check it with my sire, just in case. And I will finally make my way back to my actual home, my lovely, secure penthouse, high in the sky. Alright, so you arrive at your penthouse, and as soon as you see your front door, you can see that there's something wrong. It is actually half open. There is someone who has broken into your apartment. I sort of twitch a little. I think to myself immediately, how is this even possible? How would they know where I live? That's not good. That's very good. And how did they even get in this far? This is high up in an extremely secure penthouse. I move to the door. I just sort of gently push it open just to see if there's someone waiting for me. You can't hear anything. You can see uh, some footsteps from some dirty shoes on your floor. You can see a vase that's been knocked over that's usually in the hallway. You can see a couple of paintings have been ripped down from your wall. And as soon as you step inside, you can smell the pungent smell of blood. What in the name of... Ugh, I... This is intolerable. I, I, I storm in and start looking over the damage. What have they done to my things? Well, it's not so much your things. It's more... a body. On your glass coffee table, uh, in front of your white sofa, you see a body. Um, it is lying on its back, with its face facing up towards the ceiling, and it is almost unrecognizable. It's the body of a man, split open from his breastbone and all the way down to his pelvis. And all of his intestines have been ripped up and thrown all over your living room. His jaw is missing. It's been just broken off of him. So his tongue is kind of lying on his neck. Um, without any support anymore. Uh, both of his eyes have been gawked out. And one of them you can see lying on the floor. And the only thing that kind of seems familiar to you is an ID card. In the hand of the victim. And you can see that it's Teller. I sort of stand there for a moment. Almost deadly still. Quite easy for me, being mostly dead. The fingers on my hand just sort of flex back and forth. Back and forth. I step over to the body of Teller. My stupid little Teller. What have they done to you? What the. Mm. I kind of look over the corpse. I don't need to guess how he died. He's been brutally murdered. Hmm. My mind races through a few possibilities. There's only one person. Surely it couldn't have been Malenkov, and none of those Anarchs know about this. Unknown. It was unknown, wasn't it? It was that fucking little bastard. Ah! I feel very... I'm unsure what the feeling is, because Teller was such a, a fool and a moron, and he was, m m well, mine, and, and, and more importantly, my sire's, and, and he didn't deserve 
deserve this. You didn't deserve this. Oh, tell her, you stupid man! Why couldn't you defend yourself? Um, mm. And I kind of just start pacing. Pacing. I start looking at the damage. <sighs> okay. Okay, I need to... Uh, I, I need to c calm myself. I calm myself. And then I go to the phone. Because the flat does, of course, have an actual direct line phone. I need to call my sire. She's gonna need to know. We need to clear this body up. The entire apartment needs to be cleansed. And yes, she needs to know. Um, so I ring her. You ring her and it takes a little while for her for uh, to pick up. She eventually does. Um, yes. Uh, sire, I'm so sorry to bother you this late. I, we have a little bit of... I know you don't like hearing about problems, but we have a little problem at home. Oh, is that so? Yes. Uh, someone's... Someone's killed Teller. What? Teller! He's in pieces all over my living room. I think it was... Fucking unknown. That's the only person it could be. Oh, what a shame. He was a... Uh... Good slave, wasn't he? He served us for how many years? 30? 40? Uh, it's at least 20 for me, sire. Oh, um, yeah. uh, what a shame. Oh well. Um, do you have any idea who've done this? I think it was unknown. It has to be! Who else would want to kill my ghoul? I mean, sorry, your ghoul. Your ghoul. Hmm. I don't know. He didn't strike me as a violent man. No. Um, I'll I'll look into it. Um, do you, you you should get your apartment cleaned up probably. Of course. Uh, which number should I ring? I I can do that. Of course. I just need to. Know you know what? Let me do that. And why don't you handle the family? Um, you know that he had a a daughter. Um, why don't you make sure that she is informed and make it look like I don't know a suicide. I don't know how. Um destroyed the body is it's, it's uh, very uh sire um you not push him out of the window then i might need to choose a different window unless you it's okay to push it out of my window mm, well what do you think um you wouldn't have mentioned no of course it's not a good idea to push it out of your own window think once in a while just once in a while. I'll have to find a place to push him out then. Just make it work. Of course. I'll make sure that there's a cleanup for your apartment and you handle the rest, okay? Don't call me anymore tonight. Uh, of course. Oh, actually, sorry, in that case, then something more important, of course. Uh, that, that, I was going to call you anyway. Um, uh, There's going to be a vote tomorrow on the La Sombra situation. Mm. Uh, Prince Jackson has asked for my views on the matter, actually. Um, but obviously I want to know what what's your view and the clan in general on the whole matter. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't mind them as much as some other clans do. I think my vote might be in the favor of Clan the Sunbrow. I want to see what they can do. Maybe they can add some... I don't know. Refined taste to the Camarilla and we are not going to be the only clan who actually care about ethics. That Sierra girl seems sweet. Yes, sir, certainly, sire. I, I, I agree. Uh, I was thinking, and, and I don't know if you know yet, but apparently part of the, the joining is they're going to be staking a bunch of their elders. So it's a no. win-win situation. Is that so? I like that. That's very dramatic. Yes, I, I thought so. Okay, well, if that's done, then certainly. Can't see why not. Excellent. Well, then I'll approve as well. I was thinking there would be something to approve of. All right, my sire, I, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm bothering you. Uh, you take care of what you can do, and I'll, I'll take care of the rest. I, I, yes, I, I... and a shame about Portella. <laughs> well, I'll find you a new one. Of course, sire. Thank you. All right, good night. I hang up, and for a moment I 
just stare and tell her. I didn't expect this to happen to him. Ugh. I actually think I will miss him. But this feeling is surpassed for me far more by rage. How dare someone do this to my sire's property? How dare someone do this to tell her? And he had a daughter? I didn't, I didn't know that. All right. First of all, I need to... Oh, God. I leave my apartment very quickly and sort of look to see, are there any windows in the hallway? There is. Are there cameras on my front door? No. Right, well then, that will have to do. I'll go and pick up his remains as best I can. Yeah, it's it's a little difficult. Uh, the body has been there for quite a bit, so it's already quite stiff because of Rick and Morty's. Is there anything in his pockets? Well, his ID card, he has a wallet. It doesn't seem like anyone robbed him. Oh, Teller. Did, did you crack? Did you did they make you tell them where I live? Oh, Teller, that's not good. I'm talking to this corpse. <laughs> Don't know why. It's funny, though. I suppose, in a way, it doesn't feel much different to when we used to speak when he was alive. I quickly... Take him to the corridor, looking around, head to the window, and just sort of ease it open. Wince a little as I quickly give him a shove out. He falls, and in a matter of seconds, you can hear the the sound of a soft body hitting hard concrete, and a couple of screams can be heard from beneath. I think to myself, this is certainly going to be newsworthy for this neighborhood. And at the same time, you see a couple of cars, a white van pulling up at your apartment building. And you see a couple of familiar faces. It's some ghouls from your clan that looks like they're bringing in some cleaning equipment. Ah, good. Yes, that'll all be taken care of. Although I don't like the idea of them being in my home. Uh, I don't like people being in my home. Oh, what an unfortunate turn of events. I am extremely angry. And daughter, daughter, I don't know where to... Ah, where did he live? In his wallet, you can see there is a picture of his girl. And you can see there is uh, a, a little note with a couple of telephone numbers. I see. I'll make the call. I go into my apartment again, possibly very shortly joined by these ghouls cleaning the blood and gore off my lovely furniture. Yeah, they are very effective. Very quick. And I ring the number. Uh, hello? Who is this? Hi. Is this... I'm sorry, is this the next of kin for, uh, Mr. Teller? Uh, my, yeah, my, my dad? He, yes. Ah, uh, ooh, I have some bad news. Who, who is this? This is, uh, someone he works with, actually. Oh, his boss? No, no, not his boss, actually. Uh, just someone he worked with in, you know, um, uh, you know, driver yeah, yeah. stuff. Yes. I, I know. Uh, hello, how can I help you? I'm sorry, it's I'm really late. <laughs> I was quite worried about your father tonight, and I went to meet him at a place he works at normally, and you're not going to believe this. I, I'm so sorry, but uh, there's been a death. There was a body. It, it fell from an apartment. I saw it. I was on the ground, and it just fell. And... People are gathering around, but I, I'm trying to ring your father, and I can't get through. I think your father fell out of a building. Wait, what? In uh, downtown Chicago. That's where I am now. Oh, no, no, no. What, what are you saying to me? I don't. I'm sorry. I'm just. Uh, uh, I'm just here on the street level. Uh, what? What? What are you? Are you telling me my dad is dead? I'm. I'm really Wait, sorry. What the fuck? 
I, I'm really, I thought, I, I just, you're the, no, no, you, no, I, I, mean, no. I have his wallet Are here, you, sure you have a number. my dad? No, I, I can't be my dad. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. I don't know what happened. It's a very, it's, it's. No, no. He no. said the last time I saw him, he was very upset about something. I don't know what it was. My dad would never do that. Are you sure it's my dad? Are you sh are you 100% sure it's my dad? It's a man with his Where wallet. Where is he? Front. Where is he? I give her the address of where we are. <laughs> I'm gonna come. You, I, I, it's you go. She hangs up. Well, I sort of stand there for a moment, looking at the phone, looking at the blood stains being cleared from the carpet, and I do feel something. I feel that was very awkward. And I feel very angry. Because it had to be unknown. What a little piece of garbage. I wonder where he even is. I'm going to need to find out. Hmm. I quickly give Claudia a ring. Um, hello? Messenger, hi, it's me, Vincent, hey. Hey, uh, it's really late you're calling me, you know that? It's like three in the morning. City never sleeps. <sighs> Funny story. Have you heard anything about Unknown tonight, uh, that artist fellow? I, 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 cause I think I saw him at a fancy dig somewhere, um, and then he went off from there, and I'm wondering if you've heard anything about, like, is he, like, holding a party somewhere or something? Mm, no, it's... As far as I know, he was left the city yesterday or something. Yesterday. Hmm. All right, Miss Messenger, you can go back to sleep. Okay, you can look you forward not to your... call me in the middle of the night? Like I have a life. Well, I was calling you to let you know you're getting a raise, so I'm sorry. Oh, Good news. Oh, well, in in that case, um. Thank you. You can, you know, you can always call me. How much are we talking about? Oh, you know, um, twenty percent. Oh, <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, that's 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 okay. Well, thank you. You did a good job. Yeah, I know I did. I want you to appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Well, um, good night, boss. I hang up, and as they're cleaning away, I just. I'm not entirely sure what I can do. You can hear sirens in the distance um, approaching your apartment building. If you look out of the window, you can see a circle of people have uh, surrounded the body of Teller. And they are horrified. Uh, some of them are looking away. Um, they are... It's quite a scene. Yes. Yes, it is. And after a little while, you can see a girl on her bicycle. Um, she throws a bicycle on the ground and she runs up, pushes a police officer almost to the ground. She's a small girl. She's around maybe 16, 17 years old. Um, and she falls to the ground and lets out a heart wrenching scream as she sees her dad. I didn't think she'd be so young. That's unpleasant. I I close the shutters slowly, so I can no longer see it down below. I don't think they're going to come up here because you wouldn't know which floor someone fell from. From this height, it could have been any one floor above at least the twentieth floor. And I imagine the ghouls are clearing up and finishing. Now. Yeah, the, a couple of the ghouls have, they are coming into the hallway because some blood has spilled when you um, dragged his body into the hallway. They're cleaning mm. up and, excuse me sir, some of them gently pushes you to the side so they can get the job done quickly before the police arrives. Yes, of course. Yes. <sighs> How did that happen? I don't know. Someone didn't like my retainer, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. So you pushed him out of the window? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, you know. He jumped from a window. Much easier to explain than he was ripped apart in my apartment. Yeah, 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 I get that. 
Oh well. Luckily we have lots of other retainers you can get. Shouldn't be too much of a loss. He pats you on the shoulder and then he leaves. Thank you. How is all of this making you feel? You... In reality, your your relationship with Teller was quite strained at times. Um, but he has been in your life ever since you were a newly embraced vampire, even in years of your life as a ghoul. How how does it make you feel to see this spectacle? I go back to my now clean apartment, almost spotless. They even took away the coffee table. I sit down, alone in my little home. Alone. And I just brood with resentment over uh, this thing being done to me. I'm going to find out who did it. And they're going to pay. They're going to pay for trying to take my things. And my stupid little teller. He was... He wasn't a friend, was he? I don't think he thought he was my friend. I should have been nicer to him, shouldn't I? I think to myself, sitting there alone, as the night goes on. You can hear the screams and cries of Teller's daughter from the street. It's almost like minutes pass, when in reality it's hours. You're sitting there and just listening. Listening to the sirens going from a full blast to just disappearing in the background. Sounds turning back to normal as if nothing happens. And you can see the sunrise in the distance. You don't know how many hours you've been sitting here, but... This is the first time in a long time that you feel any kind of sadness. Just sadness. Yes. Yes. Secretly, here alone, I'll admit. I'm sad. Alan! You helped Dolph in his apartment with this weird arrangement of his that you didn't really quite understand, but you were happy to help him regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going now? Well, I really miss Michael. I really want to get back to him and I want to get to Beethoven as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm a real mess and he's going to be at his place, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home. Though, like I said, I should probably get my own car. I, I don't know if this is going to cause trouble for me if I keep driving this one. And I look down and still see the footprints in the ashes. And also, this is a bit messy. This, this is a bit blood spilled as well. No, I don't want to have this around my place. I'm going to take this to... I'm gonna take this to the airport and then get my car, get back to Michael and shit, it's getting late already. Oh, so much for downtime with him. Alright, so you arrive at Michael's and you can see he's home. His light is even on and it's weird because it's quite early in the morning, late in the night. But you know that Michael sometimes stays up um, when he's feeling lonely, you know, he has a tendency to to abuse both alcohol and drugs, um, but you hope that he's kept to his promise, and that isn't what he's doing right now. Yeah, and I uh, sort of adjust the shirt that I've changed into, and I uh, feel a bit fresher, and I'm back in my car, and the pets are fed back home, and some time has passed. And, uh, I know Beethoven's gonna be still with him, so... Alright, 
Well, he, 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 I know he's not doing that. He's, he's been off it for a while now. He should be, should be all right. I'll just try and ease this change in as smoothly as I can and not serve him everything. Just like Dolph said, don't tell about everything that's going on. So you see what he's been up to. And I get out of the car and I get up to the house, fumble with the keys and the... You see that your keys doesn't fit in the lock for some reason. I, uh, I look around. Am I in the right place? You, you are in the right place. It even says his name on the mailbox outside. Uh, okay. Try again. This is weird. Uh, I ring the bell. Um, you can hear someone scrambling inside. Uh, you can hear Michael's voice whispering something or saying something. And footsteps running down the stairs. Um, and Michael opens the door. He is not wearing a shirt. He's wearing some pajama pants. Um, his hair is messy. Um, he's looking quite tired. Opening the door. Uh, uh, um, hi. Huh. Hey, oh. hey, babe. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm late. <laughs> Are you, you gone to bed already? I guess. <laughs> or, uh, uh yeah. He looks behind his shoulder. Yeah. Um. Look, this is a uh, uh, kind of a bad time. <laughs> My keys don't fit in the door. What's uh, what's wrong? Uh. What do you mean bad time? And I sort of look over his shoulder. What's going on? Um, it's, it's, uh, look, uh, we, what, what are you, we, we, uh, uh, we, uh, where's Beethoven? We need to talk, uh, I suppose, um, oh. fuck, okay, come in, you can smell that his breath smells of alcohol, and that immediately sends a big warning chill down my spine. Michael, what, what's going on? Have you been? Uh, listen, sit down. I, I sit down. With great apprehension. You can see that his apartment is a mess. It has not looked worse in years. It is bad. Ha. Uh, there are bottles everywhere. Um, there are little baggies of the remains of white powder. And he sits down on the floor in the middle of the mess, and he takes out his arms in a like upgiving manner. And what the hell did you have? A Do you know how long you've been away? Do you know how long you've been away? Huh? Well, I I left you saying I had to take care of some business. Then there was one day. Okay, two days. I'm sorry, I, I lost count. Yeah. Yeah, you you it's been lost two count. days. You know what I asked for? All I asked for? He takes a ball and he throws it to the wall in pure frustration. All I fucking asked for was for you to be here, okay? You've lied to me. And and all I asked of you was for you to be here. For you to be here for me. My and you Michael. you weren't here for me. I needed you! What happened, man? I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. What happened? Come you on. left me alone. You forgot about me because you are on some fucking great vampire adventure with your friends. And who's sitting here back alone? Fucking Michael is. Me. I don't have anyone but you. Okay? Well, Michael, and you no. forgot about me. No, I didn't forget yes, about you. Did. You, you no, forgot you... about me. You didn't no. even fucking call me. You didn't respond to my calls. Uh, Come here, babe. Don't I'm s fucking touch me! Go away from me! Get out of my fucking life! No, stop it, Get out it, of man. my life! I don't want you here. I don't want you near me at all. Just go the fuck away from me. Stop keeping giving me fake promises, empty promises that you're going to be here when you're not. I'm going to drink myself to fucking death and it's your fault. Get out! 
I get out. I feel I can't. I can't do anything when he's like this. He just forces me up and 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 sort of towards the door. And as I'm trying to hold the door open, but my, you gotta calm down, man. I I, I didn't forget about you. But I can't talk to you when you're like this. I don't want to talk to you. We're done. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to die here. No, I man. don't have anyone. Michael. I don't have anyone. Yes, you do, Michael. I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I look. I've been through some really, really horrible days, and I wouldn't. I didn't want anything but coming back to you. I promise. I've had. I've had. Absolutely shitty days. Well, what do you think I have? What does it look like? Does it look yeah. like I'm stable? No, I'm not. I see you've had a horrible time, and and I'm so sorry about that. And I, I I can take part of the blame, but man, did you do all this yourself in just two days? Did you have people over? Was what it? What do you care? I love you, man. You, you are, you are the most important person in my life. You know that. I don't have, I don't have a family. I don't. I've got these freaks that I'm sharing nothing with except this weird state of body. Not mine. Not like you and me. Well, you. Funny how you say that when you don't use any time on me. You're never here. I am, and you know I'm here as much as I can. Bef Did you know that it was our anniversary yesterday? Huh? <sighs> no, you forgot about that, didn't you? Because you were out with your non-important freak friends. That you apparently don't share anything yeah. with. Yeah. I, I did. I did forget that. I'm... Look... I'm really sorry, Michael. I I'm can't really do sorry. it anymore, man. I can't do Michael, it. Michael, Michael, come here. Come here. <laughs> come here, okay? And he lets you get near him. And I and I come in and I and I just very sort of gently uh, come near and and put my hands on, on his shoulder. Look, look, I I get it. I know. I know what you're going through. Because you're always talking to me. And you see, that's what we have. We're talking to each other. And I've been trying to open up about this weird stuff that I had to go through now. And, I, and I'm telling you, what I've been doing the last two days, you don't want to know. It's been... It's been... Blood and dead people. You just you, you promised me. I did. I did. That was the last promise you did. The last promise you made before you went out of the door, and then I didn't see you. And then it was one our anniversary, and you didn't show up, and I started drinking again, and then I'm just a mess, man. I know, man. I know. Hey, let's. I love you. I love you too. Come here. Come here. I'm sorry. It's, I know oh, I promised a... I wouldn't do it again. And I promised so we're too. All right? Yeah. It's all it's all sh it's, no, it's not all shit. But there's a whole lot of shit, okay? There's a whole lot of nothing good and that's not you and me, okay? That's not you and me. We are the good things in all this storm of misery, all right? Yeah. Let's clean this place up, okay? You know, I have something I need to tell you. You're gonna hate me for this. It's not about... Uh, it's not Beethoven. No, no, let, let me... No, no. Okay. No, Beethoven's fine. Okay. I uh, remember when we had that first fight. Yeah. Yeah. And you went to um that dinner. 
Yeah. I don't know if you know where this is going, but I was... I was really angry, and I um, told your dad uh, everything. Um, sorry. That was really bad of me. And I think I'm I'm angry at myself the most and and I'm projecting that onto you and that's not I'm really sorry. If you hate me, that's fine. You you have all the right to do so, just And I go in and I I hold him close and I hug him. No. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for not making me have to pull that out of you. <laughs> I was wondering. And I didn't. I, I. And then I freeze up. And I back up a bit. I have to know what exactly you told him. Um. That you're gay. And. That's it. What else should I tell him? <laughs> what else? Yeah. You t you told him you were my boyfriend. Well. Yeah. Because you know you you're damn right you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's not changing, you know. I don't know what you see in me, man. Look at me in my shitty apartment, full of fucking. Bottles hey. everywhere, and hey. I'm just a mess. You are not your apartment. You are not this mess. You are not the alcohol. You're not the drugs. None of that's you. That's just shit we put around ourselves, trying to wrap ourselves in, trying to look like something, or trying to escape something. You are this, you know? This that I have in front of me. This. This that we share. That's you. And this. All the rest. It's a mess that we clean up. You're always there to clean up after me. <laughs> You're wrong there. We're cleaning up together. <laughs> you know. I'm never going to be the one who goes around and picks things up and going to suffer in silence. You know? No. We clean up together. Man, look at us. Look at us. <sighs> and we move on. We stick together and, and we stick to us. Yeah. But you know, my dad, you <laughs> you should have seen his face. Oh, man. I wish, I wish, <laughs> you know, I wish I could have filmed that and, and shown you. Because oh, I'm so fucking so. How did he react? He, he he couldn't get the words out, man. He was he was he was about to explode, and I wish he had. Believe me, it's a mess. My brother, he's suspected all the time, and my mom, she's you know. Well. You don't have to tell me. You don't want to... I don't, I don't want anything to do with them. I got a secret obsession, though. Yeah. I, you know, I just... I just help someone very important in this... In this society. Yeah, the vampire thing, or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. the vampire thing. And um, they're going to pay me back pretty well. Oh, really? Hopefully. I don't know if it's going to make up for all this stuff that we had to do. But what I want to do, and I'm pretty f fucking close, if you excuse my language. I'm pretty fucking close to buying my parents' land. What? Are you kidding me? Are we going to be landowners? Well, I'm going to own it. And they, what the fuck? If I get enough from this person, which I think I can, I will buy it. And they can, if they're gonna live there, 
they'll have me to answer for. You see how wonderful that is? That irony? They can, they can, they can pay rent, tithe, if you like, you know. But <laughs> they're gonna have nothing left of their own because that's how far I've come. <coughs> Isn't that mad? You know. I mean, can you can you imagine us being? Can you imagine us being landowners? Like we've lived in the fucking city for years, man. And I kind of stopped because. I, it's, it's, this is uh, something I hadn't considered that I would actually just take over the place and everything. Would you like? I, would you want that? Uh, that's a big. That's a big thing. Uh, I mean, if it's with you, yeah, sure. No, I don't. I was. I don't know, man. I've been thinking about this for so many years. It's been something I've been working so hard towards. I've been doing the tours. I've been selling. Uh, we were selling records. We've been doing so well through through all the things that I've been making up. I've I've even sold classical records. I mean, that's one of the, some of the few that the my parents actually have. But the money has been it's been good to me, man. You know that, and I know that it's been sometimes been a bit of an argument between us that we have. You know, it's not completely balanced between you and me, but. Anyways, hey, it's something that's always driven me. Babe, if you... I can feel that this is something you want to do. Listen, he puts his arm around your neck and rests his head on your shoulder. If this is what you want to do, we're going to do it, man. I don't care where I am. We can be in fucking top of a mountain. We can be... The deepest level of the yeah. sea. We can it's be pretty. in a fucking cavern in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. As long as we're together, I don't yeah. give a shit where we are. If you yeah. want to buy your parents' land and <laughs> say fuck them, is it is it too? I mean, just to get back at them. Is it is it too? Is it too psycho? What do you think? Nah, I think it's fucking funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna yeah. do it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah. Well. Well, okay, okay. This is me spiraling off a little bit, but I I need that extra to push me over the edge. And if this is what I will get from from tonight, then or tomorrow night, then yeah, that's what I would hope for you to embark with me upon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna be all the way, man. I, I just sorry for all of this. I, yeah, you no, know, man, you know I'm sorry. Can. No, I I am sorry. I genuinely am sorry, and I, 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 I should not let. No matter how how important it is to other people, what what I what I have to do for them, I sh I should not let that get in between you and me. I I should have called. I should have talked to you, uh, even if it was just you know. Just you no, know, briefly. It doesn't have to yeah. be a whole thing. Just let yeah. me know it's your life, man. Yeah, I I got really caught up and. Uh, I am sorry. I am sorry too. Let's let's you know. Let's both take responsibility for this. I say as I put more bottles into bags and and throw it out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for for being you. Thank you for for being you with me. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the chronicle The Sacrifice from Chicago by Night for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Chicago by Night is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing, and Vampire the Masquerade is published by Modiphius. Our storyteller was Clara Horsher Herbal, and we were also joined by the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins. Check them out on social media and on their Patreons to support their work in the tabletop space. The intro was composed for us by the amazing Simon Kelle, and he's also provided all of the music for this chronicle. Check out his work over on simonkolle.com. Sound effects are created by the fine folks at freesound.org and Sirenscape. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, and David for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons, Without your support, the show would not be possible.